If you're new to Family Science, my name is Spencer. And I'm Jason. Cool, and welcome to Family Science. This is actually our second week. Uh, we began last week, and our topic is nano-sized objects. Do you guys remember what we did last week? Do you remember what nano-sized objects are? Anybody? Kind of like an atom. An atom, yeah, really close. So what, what more specifically about them? Do you know back there? Kind of small. Exactly. So some, sorry. So something so small you can't see, right? Yeah. So we learned that nano objects are objects so small that you can't see them. But we also, yeah. But we remember. Do you guys remember the demonstration with the bag of air? Yeah. You guys remember that even though you can't see anything in there, you can feel the air physically inside it. So the air is an example of a nano object. You can feel it. It's there, but you can't see it. Do you guys remember the experiment we did? Yeah. Um, it was something that um, you have to build nanos, and then you have to check um, if your nanos, how strong your nanos are. Exactly. So we built nanostructures, and we learned that they're really similar to bigger structures. Kind of like a brick wall has to be built correctly. A nanostructure, like we tested under the weight of the books, had to be structured correctly as well. So what we're going to talk about this week is if something is so small, how do we see it? So normally when we want to look at little things, we use microscopes, right? Raise your hand if you've seen or used a microscope before. Magnifying glasses use mirrors or uh, to magnify the actual image. So I'm going to pass you guys around little magnifying glasses. You can kind of see up close. So go ahead and look at your hand and you can see all sorts of different things that you normally can't see, right? Your hand looks bigger? Yes. Maybe you see some wrinkles in your hands. Maybe you see some dirt under your fingernails. Time to wash your hands a little bit better. Okay, so the magnifying glasses in your hands are how our regular microscopes work that you'll see in your classrooms. But nano and nano objects are so small that even a microscope can't work by making things bigger. Can everyone see this picture here? Yes. yes. Have you ever seen one of these before? Yes. Okay. So behind this cool little pin toy, there's a hand, right? And we don't know what color that hand is, but we can tell that there's a hand here because it's pushed on the pins. So everyone hold up your hand like this real quick. Okay. And take a real good look at it. These fingers stick out further than these fingers sticking up, right? So if we were to push our hand up against a bunch of pins, our thumb would stick out on those pins a lot further than our first two fingers. So that's how our special nano microscopes work. We can't blow things up really big, so we have to use small objects to see how far they push. So you can think about this tennis ball as part of our new special microscope. If I drop it against the floor, it drops further than if I drop it on this table. So on the floor, my ball only bounces to here. And on the table, my ball bounces up here. So even if I couldn't see this table, I would know that it was higher up than the floor, all from bouncing a ball off of it. Last week, we asked you what the smallest thing you could think of was, and someone said an atom. Who said atom? Atom, okay. An atom is small, an atom makes up molecules, and an atom is close to nano. Well, what we know is that atoms are kind of the building blocks of everything. Everything is made up of atoms. And we know a lot about atoms. And we know a lot about these little dots out here on the outside of an atom. Those are called electrons. So think of our tennis ball as an electron. So now we're going to give you kind of an example of what a nano microscope can do. But here's actually an example of one of the most advanced ones. This is a microscope or a nano microscope that actually see atoms at that small size. Notice how much larger it is compared to these smaller microscopes. So this whole area up here is where the machine is throwing electrons onto an object to see the different depths of the object it is going against. So now to give you an example of what a nano microscope can do, First, we have a picture of a, anybody know what it is? Fly. Fly. This is how you'd see it normally. Now we're going to see what it looks like with a regular microscope, like over there. Notice how you can see a lot more detail. You can see the individual hairs on it. Now, Jason is going to show you how a fly would look like under an electron microscope, even closer up. 
So right now, what you normally see is just some red shape. You can see so much more detail. You can see separate individual holes and even hairs almost coming out of the eye. All right. So we know that our special microscopes can't see color because they're not using real light. We just have really big, expensive machines to bounce little balls off of objects. You can also think of it as if you were to touch something in the dark, closing your eyes. You can feel how it feels, although you can't tell what color it is. So just by seeing how we push on something with little objects, our big expensive machines can, can, can make really big images of our small objects. And that's how our nano microscopes work. So tonight we're going to make our own nano microscopes. So here's the microscope Spencer and I made. So as my nano sensor traces an object, it draws on the piece of paper, right? So even though I can't see the object I'm tracing, I can see it on our piece of paper. We're going to give you everything that we have here. So before we give you all of that, we need to talk about the lasers. So you're each going to use one of these tonight, and they all create a red dot. But we want you all to be very, very careful with them. Because if a laser gets in your eyes, it can really hurt you. And we're going to pass out our lasers last, and we're going to build our own microscopes. OK. So let's go first with if something smaller than a nano, how can we see it? Well, that's a very good question, um, and so far, we can't. We only have ideas of how they look like and how they work. So scientists have really big machines, kind of like the microscope that we showed, and what they do is they sense things that touch them. They, all, they go off of feel, and they're very, very sensitive. And they can see, and they can, I'm sorry, they can feel things that are smaller than we can see. And that's kind of how our electron microscopes work. Okay. So something smaller than a nano, we have some sensors that are sensitive enough to feel them, but we really can't see them. Same with our nano is we can't see them, but we can feel them. Does that kind of make sense? So what our special microscopes are going to do is they're going to trace for us, and they're going to give us a really good picture of what this looks like without ever looking at it. Kind of make sense? OK. We're going to pass out the materials now to your table, so you don't need to get up, and we're going to begin. Parents, I'm also going to give you a mirror. Okay. Okay. And kind of think about how you want to attach it to bounce that light beam onto a piece of paper. Stick your hand up there, just like that. All right. If I wanted to trace your hand, I could take this ruler and go up and down and up and down all over your fingers, right? So that my ruler was bouncing up and bouncing down just like that, right? Well, what we can do, kind of like those big $15 million ones do, is as my ruler's bouncing, my mirror's bouncing, right? And if I have a laser shining down on this mirror, I can get that light to bounce onto my paper. See how my laser isn't pointed at the paper? It's pointed at the mirror. So as my ruler goes up and down over your fingers, it would trace out the shape of your fingers on this piece of paper. See that? My idea was to make, because we we have a mirror, so we could make it reflect off of, we could make it bounce off of the laser, so the light will um, bounce off um, somewhere else. Careful. It also, we had it. So Oh, shoot. 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 Oh,
those that like that. Yes. Like, no, take this. Just Good job, good job. Oh, look, it's a baby. Good job, Papa. High five. Remember what I say? Where's it? You have it in your hand? What? Oh, And who wants to operate? Who wants to trace? All right, I'm excited to come over and trace with you. Let's see what happens. Huh? <laughs> okay. Don't turn it on. It's too heavy. See, look at me. Good. It's hard, difficult. Difficult. But we're having trouble putting the laser. You should have taped that to that. Well, it's never too late. You want to try taping it? You should take that for that. All right. That's the best part about engineering. If something doesn't work, we just keep fixing it. <laughs> oh, snap. And we should all over there. Oh, snap. How about we, we tape it onto here? Okay, now. All right, so we got a couple of good corners. We know that this object, whatever our mystery object is, has about three sides when we look at it from over here, yeah? All right, guess what? You just built something that took a lot of people $15 million and 30 years to build. You did it in 30 minutes. High five. Boom. I'm really glad you all came out. It was really good to see some new faces, meet new people, and we're really glad you came back. So remember last week we talked about nanoparticles and how they're so small we can't even see them. This week we talked about how we could kind of tell what shape things are just by feeling and drawing them. Next week what we're going to be talking about is how scientists and engineers move around these nanoparticles. So far we learned what nano means. It's really, really small objects. We learned tonight that we could draw pictures of small things even though we can't see them. And just like our microscopes here, scientists feel and draw those things. Next week, we're going to talk about how scientists and engineers move nano-sized objects. So now that we know what they are and we can tell where they are, we're going to start building things with nano objects. Have a great week, everyone. Thanks for coming. And give yourselves one last round of applause.